everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Shift with Gina. This podcast is an accompaniment to my women's group, also called The Shift, which is hosted on Mighty Network. So click the link in the description if you are a woman to join our women's health group. We do two weekly workouts. We always do health challenges together. We're currently in the middle of a cardio challenge for the next three and a half weeks, so you can jump in and join anytime. We are also currently in the middle of a fertility series where I'm bringing in eight different expert ex- experts to talk about women's health, hormones, fertility, optimizing fertility, pregnancy, birth, postpartum. Um, We've got everything from a fertility awareness educator to a nutrition expert to an OBGYN to holistic practitioners to an herbalist, a doula. So if you have missed any of the past exclusive interviews that are posted in my group, they're all recorded in the live streams tab. So once you join the group, you can go back and watch those exclusive interviews anytime. And we have, I think, four more interviews coming up. So it's a great time to join the shift. This podcast is just a chance for me to talk about some cultural issues that are related to women and women's health. Today, we're going to talk about a really tragic story out of the UK, which you may have heard about already. By now, a 44-year-old mother by the name of Carla Foster has been jailed because she aborted her baby when she was between 32 to 34 weeks pregnant. That's eight months, eight months pregnant. So almost pretty much full term, right? Full term is technically considered 35 weeks, but as I was talking about the story online and kind of poking around on Twitter, I personally heard from many women whose children were born between 32 to 34 weeks, obviously considered preemies. Um, I'm sure that a lot of these kids had to be in NICU for a little while, but they are now healthy and thriving and they're fully functioning children. One of the ladies had a pregnancy that she had to give birth around 33 weeks and her son is 21 years old now and he's doing great. So this story is really haunting. Um, But I want to talk about not only the story itself, but how the media is covering the story, how people are reacting to it, how activists are making her out to be the victim, the mother out to be the victim, as if she is the victim of an unfair legal system, a predatory medical system, which, yeah, the medical system is predatory. But once you hear the story, you're going to have a hard time blaming this on really anyone else but the mother. Um, And then we'll talk a little bit more generally about abortion. So let's get into the story. She's a 44-year-old mom who already has three kids, one of whom has special needs. When she found out she was pregnant... She moved in with an ex-boyfriend who was not the father of the child. And she was trying to hide the fact that she was pregnant from this man whose house she just moved into. Right. So she's trying to hide the fact that she is carrying another man's child as she is moving in with an ex-boyfriend. Now, during this time, this is during the COVID lockdown. So this is a pretty important Uh, factor in this case because this is a time where really doctor's offices weren't open and people weren't seeing patients normally you know this was the wackadoo time where you couldn't even go to the doctor if you had you know some as some kind of sickness or injury that wasn't covid right so she was contacting doctors remotely and she reached out and was lying about how far along she was in her pregnancy she knew for a fact that she was past 10 weeks. Um, And so during this time between 10 to 32 weeks of pregnancy, she knew that she was far past the limit that is considered a legal abortion. So I say 10 weeks because in the UK, after 10 weeks, you have to go to the doctor and have your abortion done in person at the doctor's office. Um, I assume that the vast majority, if not all of abortions after 10 to 12 weeks are surgical abortions. Just to give you a little bit of background, if you're not familiar, there's medical abortion and surgical abortion. Medical abortion is when you essentially take the abortion pill and that starves the baby of nutrients. It stops your body from producing progesterone and the baby starves and shrivels up and dies and you pass the baby. Essentially, you have to give, um, you know, you bleed the, the remnants of the baby out. And then there's surgical abortion where you have to go in and you have a DNC where they go and it can be as brutal as the doctor takes forceps, rips apart the baby's arms limb by limb and the baby's legs, and then rips out the torso of the baby and then crushes the skull and rips the head out. This is not hyperbole. This is not fear mongering. That's actually what happens 
in many surgical abortions. So she knew she was well past 10 weeks, but she wasn't able to go into the clinic to have an abortion because of the COVID lockdowns. So she lied about how far along she was. And also good to know in that in the UK, it's illegal to obtain an abortion after 24 weeks. 24 weeks is so late. I mean, it doesn't even matter how far along you are. Abortion is wrong either way, which we're going to get into more in a little bit. But 24 weeks, that's that's pretty far along. I mean, my my daughter started kicking. I felt her kicking when she was 18 weeks. And I first saw her on the ultrasound and heard her heartbeat when she was six or seven weeks. So 24 weeks, I mean, that's far along. But that's the legal limit for abortion in the UK. So this woman, not only does she lie intentionally to medical providers remotely, she was also, according to law enforcement, Googling how to hide, um, how to hide a pregnancy. Uh, she was also Googling, I need to have an abortion, but I'm past 24 weeks. Googling also this phrase, could I go to jail for aborting my baby at 30 weeks? So this was... This shows intent. This shows premeditation. She knew exactly what she was doing. Meanwhile, she's living with an ex-boyfriend and she's, uh, for all intents and purposes, mooching off of him. And she's Googling all of these questions about how can I kill my baby and not get in trouble? So she obtains the abortion pills because she lied to so many medical providers. They were mailed to her. So she, she takes the abortion pills. The baby dies inside of her and she still has to give birth because when you're 32, 33, 34 weeks pregnant, according to the coroner's report, the baby was between 32 to 34 weeks gestation. They couldn't know for sure. But at that point, there's nothing that can happen to the baby except you give birth to the baby. It's not like the baby just magically disappears in your womb. So she killed the baby and she still gave birth to the baby, but the baby was stillborn. And this is how we end up with the story of a woman who intentionally murders her own child, even though she already has three kids and whatever her reasoning was. So, you know, you think this is all bad enough. It's stories, honestly, it's stories like this that make it so easy to hate women. You know, sometimes you hear stories of heinous things that men do and it makes it so easy to just hate men. These are the kinds of stories that just make it so easy to hate women. Because all these factors, right? She's lying to her ex-boyfriend, trying to conceal her pregnancy from another dude from the ex-boyfriend that she moved in with. She is Googling all of these things about how not to go to jail for murdering her 30-week-old child. You know, and you hear all this and you're like, what kind of evil human being would premeditate all of this, would go through all of this? Especially because you know that you have to give birth to your child anyway. Your baby's 32, 33, 34 weeks old. Like that's pretty much a full formed child, you know, you have to give birth to the baby anyway. So why not give the, give birth to the baby and give her up for adoption? You know, that's a very brutal death. So that's essentially like a newborn. You just leave them on the table and you just let them starve and die. That's what she did to her child in her womb because the abortion pill significantly reduced the nutrients that the baby needs to survive, depleted her body of progesterone, etc. But to make things even worse, the night before she was uh, held off to jail, she went on her Facebook page and she started posting some memes. And one of the things that she posted was, let's see if I can find this. It was, <laughs> this is what she wrote. She said, nobody has the right to judge you. So look at this meme here. This is what she posts on Facebook. No one has the right to judge you because no one knows what you've been through. They may have heard stories, but they didn't feel what you felt in your heart. Okay, she posted this at 3 a.m. just hours before she was thrown into jail. Here's another one. <laughs> on Sunday, she posted on Facebook. Life has knocked me down a few times. It showed me things I never wanted to see. I experienced sadness and failures, but one thing for sure, I always get up. She is painting herself out to be a victim. Listen to this. Listen to this wording. No one knows what you've been through. Nobody can judge you. They may have heard stories, but they didn't feel what I felt in my heart when I was Googling, how can I murder my baby without going to jail? Life has knocked me down a few times. 
you know, like the time that I intentionally killed my child in the womb and Googled, how can I not go to prison for that? Life has knocked me down a few times. And the crazy thing about this is that she's painting herself out to be a victim. And so is half of the media. 70, 75 percent of the media is also painting her out to be a victim. So let's go to my computer and look at some of these headlines here. This is from The Guardian, the trash that is The Guardian. Outrage at jail sentence for woman who took abortion pills later than UK limit. Mitigation plea signed by medical groups was sent to judge, while BPAS chief executive said sentence was shocking and appalling. Just to catch you up to speed, the sentence was two years in prison. All she got was two years in prison for premeditating the murder of her child. And the BPAS chief executive says the sentence is shocking and appalling. Another um, headline from The Independent. Outrage as mother of three jailed for taking abortion pills after the legal cutoff. Outrage. What is the outrage about? The outrage isn't about the child who died. There's no outrage about the fact that a fully formed child at 33 weeks pregnant was murdered by her own mother. There's no outrage about that. What's their outrage about? There's outrage that the woman who killed her own child in the womb got two years in prison. Just two years. That's what the outrage is about. They're saying that the sentence was shocking and appalling. She didn't deserve that. She was a victim. Even though she premeditated this, she intentionally lied to her medical providers and she knowingly took abortion pills to kill her baby that was 33 weeks pregnant, that when, when she was 33 weeks pregnant. And if you look at all these quotes from the activists, so this is, this is from... Miss Noakes told BBC Radio 4's World Tonight program, this is not something that has been debated in great detail for many years now. Cases like this, although tragic and fortunately very rare, do throw into stark relief that we are reliant on legislation that is very, very out of date. I think that makes a case for Parliament to start looking at this issue in detail. So abortion activists and progressives have outraged because Carla Foster is being lightly, very leniently punished for what she did, and it's still too much punishment for them. To them, this is a sign that legislation needs to be less strict because she's really a victim of the system. She's a victim, even though she's the one who murdered her child in cold blood. You see the upside down we live in? I joke all the time. I don't joke. I mean it when I say we live in the upside down. The woman who is responsible for a heinous crime is the person who is being hailed as a victim. And I guarantee you, mark my words, when she's out of prison, she is going to be a feminist darling hero. She's going to get book deals. She's going to be on primetime news. She's going to be a beacon of hope for the pro-abortion feminist community. They're going to make her a hero because she killed her own child and she got sent to jail for just two years. Mark my words, I guarantee you, when she gets out, she's going to be a hero. She's going to be on, she's probably going to be on Oprah. She's set for life. This is the sick, sick world that we live in. And it makes me, it makes my blood boil that all of this outrage is for her, but there's very little to no outrage for her baby that she killed in cold blood. And then you have all these pro-abortion activists saying, well, you know, the baby didn't take an independent breath. This is actually being reported. I read it in a few different articles. The baby never took an independent breath, according to the coroner's report. What they're trying to say is the baby was still born. The baby was not breathing when the baby was born. So because the baby was only breathing inside her, her, her womb, that means that it really wasn't a crime because it's still inside her body, right? Her body, her choice. And I even what's interesting is that I'm even seeing some liberals on Twitter when I posted about this. Even some liberals are coming forward and say, listen, I'm pro-choice, but that is a really disgusting thing that she did. OK, so here's a question for you. If you think that aborting a baby at 32 weeks pregnant is a disgusting, heinous thing to do and that it's inhumane and that a person deserves to go to jail for it. Explain to me why that's any different than aborting a baby when the woman is six weeks pregnant. What's the difference? This is a serious question because we can go down the line. I can tell you all the reasons, all the responses that they'll give you. Number one, they'll say, oh, well, the, the baby is just a clump of cells at six weeks. 
I'm a clump of cells, you're a clump of cells. What does that mean, a clump of cells? The baby isn't big enough yet? Is it because of the baby's size? Is it because the baby isn't the right size? So you say that a person's size should dictate the person's worth? Is it because the baby isn't able to live out of the womb without assistance on her own? Okay, so there are people who are stuck in a coma, people who are very ill and they're hooked up to machines that they couldn't live without. Are you saying that that is a moral enough reason to end their life because they rely on something else to keep them alive? You know, you can go through all of these answers. It is illogical. There's no reason why killing a baby at 32 weeks pregnant is any different than killing a baby at six weeks of pregnancy. Is it because of the way the baby looks? Because at 33 weeks, she actually looks like a baby. And at six weeks, the baby kind of looks like a tadpole. Is it because of the way they look? Because are we determining a person's worth on what they look like, on if they're attractive enough, if they look human enough? What about deformed people? What about people who have severe skin issues or they have deformities on their face? They're not worthy of life. You can go down every single one of these answers and none of them make sense. None of them make sense. So even when I see people who are like, actually, we don't claim her, like what she did was really wrong. Why is it any different? Why is it any different? A human life is a human life from conception. It doesn't matter if the, the mother is four weeks pregnant or 34 weeks pregnant. That human life still has the same worth. A human being's worth is not determined by their size, their location, what they look like, uh, whether, they're, uh, whether they can feel pain. That's another one I hear. Well, the baby can't feel pain yet. So when you're sleeping, when you're in a coma, you can't feel pain. Can I kill you? There's just all these moral inconsistencies that really, that's why I always say this. I'm not pro-life. I appreciate what the pro-life community does, but I don't use the term pro-life because first of all, I'm not pro-life when it comes to um, child rapists and serial abusers and serial killers. I'm not pro-life when it comes to them. And I also believe that pro-life is a propaganda term that has been used in response to another propaganda term, which is pro-choice. Pro-choice makes no sense. Pro -cho what, do you, what do you mean pro-choice? You're not pro that baby's choice to live. And you, nobody gets the choice to kill someone else, regardless of their location, if they're in the woman's body at the time, temporarily, or whether they, what their size is, what they look like. No, that's why I don't use terms pro-choice, pro-life. I use pro-abortion, anti-abortion. And I consider myself to be an abortion abolitionist. The only debate that I am willing to have in good faith is whether a woman is raped. I still firmly believe that child's life is worth it. That child's life is worthy. I think we need to do a much better job at providing help and care and healing for women who have been raped and who have been impregnated. But also keep in mind, guys, that 99.5% of abortions are elective. So anytime you're arguing with or just converse, conversing with a person who is pro-abortion and they bring out that question, well, what about people who have been raped? What about women who who weren't impregnated um, on their own terms. Okay, you want to have the conversation? 0.5% of abortions are for cases of rape or incest. So 99.5% of abortions are women like this one who just decided that they don't want to be a mom. They don't want to wake up early. They don't want the responsibilities. They don't want to have another kid. And so their desires are what supposedly makes a child child's life worth it so i don't use the term pro-choice pro-life i am anti-abortion across the board i want abortion completely abolished and i know that's a really that's a very difficult thing to to aim for in our society because we've been so desensitized to abortion and because women have been convinced they have been convinced that the only ways to like the only options they have are to either accidentally get pregnant or to take synthetic hormones and endocrine disruptors that are going to completely disrupt your hormone cycle, birth control pills. We'll get into that in a second though. So there is just no logical reason why having, a, having an abortion at 34 weeks is any different than having an abortion at 10, 8, 
six weeks, whatever. A baby is a baby regardless of what stage of growth that child is in. Carla Foster, this woman, should have been sent to jail for much longer than two years. Look, as a Christian, I believe that forgiveness and redemption is available to everyone. And that's something that Christ teaches us is that forgiveness and redemption is available to everyone, even people that we find it very difficult to pray for. Christ died on the cross for all of us. However, you have to be, you have to repent. You have to be remorseful. You have to have a heart that is honest and truly wants to repent. And this woman made it very clear that she has no remorse over what she did. That's why the Facebook posts, nobody can judge me. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how much I suffered. You don't know what it takes to kill your own child. No, this woman is not remorseful. So for people who have no remorse over their crimes, for women like this who have no remorse over killing an innocent baby, you deserve far more than two years in prison. Two years is a kindness. It's going to fly by like that. And like I said, you are going to be a feminist star. Girl, you're going to have two million followers on Instagram. The second you get out of prison, you go, girl. Gloria Steinem is going to be calling you. Let's do a podcast together. Tell, tell everyone your story about how oppressed you were and you just had to kill your baby. And now you can use your platform to support abortion. I hate these people. It's so hard. It's so hard to be kind. But the thing about justice is that justice is kind. Justice is not cruel. So, you know, saying all these things and really hating this kind of evil that is done against children is, you know, what else can you do? That's the right thing to do is to hate this kind of evil, especially the kind that doesn't repent. So back to what I was saying about birth control. So one of the things that I keep hearing a lot is that 60% of women who get abortions are already mothers and they're just not ready to become a mom again. You know, as if that makes it any better, like you're already a mom. So you get, so you get brownie points. You're allowed to just kill another baby because you already had babies before. So the way that our society is set up is that it teaches women that there are only two options in life. Number one, take the birth control pill, take synthetic hormones to prevent you from getting pregnant or number two, accidentally get pregnant. So when you frame the entire reproductive system for women like this, that's why abortion is so easily handed to women and so easily accepted by women because, oh my gosh, I've only got two options. I'm either going to accidentally get pregnant or I got to take the pill. And what, so I went on Steve Bannon's show war room about a week or two ago, and we were talking about how big pharma is in bed with the conventional medical system. And most people don't know this, but a lot of the textbooks that doctors read and learn from in medical school were either written or funded by big pharma. <laughs> and also most of the doctors in medical school, and I've had people currently in medical school message me on Instagram and tell me this, they got out of a class and they told me most of these doctors in medical school learn that a woman can get pregnant on any day of the month that she's not menstruating. So you have this conventional medical system that produces all these doctors that don't even understand a woman's menstrual cycle, her hormone cycle. They don't even understand what days of the month she's actually fertile. And they most certainly don't know how to teach women to understand their cycle in order to either prevent pregnancy or to successfully have children. The only thing they're taught, one of the only things they're taught is to hand out the birth control pill to women like it's candy. Oh, you're 15 years old and you have difficult periods? Oh, honey, take the pill. That's a magic pill. Yeah, there are a couple of side effects, but it's nothing. Your boobs might get a little sore and you might get a little moody, but it's nothing compared to the benefits of the birth control pill. Meanwhile, the birth control pill completely shuts down the communication between your brain and your ovaries so that you don't ovulate. That's why you don't get pregnant. It also doesn't allow you to have a natural menstrual cycle and women respond they're like no no no, i have a period when i'm on my on the pill i just take the placebo well that's not a, a menstrual cycle that's a withdrawal bleed so even worse you have all these doctors who are giving the pill to girls as young as 14 and 15 years old and all this research coming out now is that is showing that when you give the pill to women to young girls before their body has fully developed that has significant health effects that last a very long time if not for life 
For example, their propensity for mental illness, depression, anxiety, other mood disorders, they have a much higher likelihood of going through these mental health issues once you give them the pill at a, at a very young age in their teenage years. Doctors don't tell you that. Of course they don't. You know why? Most of the doctors don't even know that because they don't know a lot of this research that's being done. All they know is birth control pill, good. Birth control pill, you're not going to get pregnant. Your periods will be better. And it's because you don't actually have your normal period when you're on the pill. And so when you frame reproduction this way, and when you teach women that the only way that they can prevent unwanted pregnancy is to take the pill, then of course they're going to take it. And then a lot of women who realize they don't like the pill because it gives them terrible side effects, it's not really going great for them, they get off the pill, and they have no idea how to track their cycle in order to naturally prevent pregnancy. So they get pregnant, and they don't want to be pregnant. And then society comes in, and they offer abortion on a silver platter. And so many women take it. And, you know, I it, it's hard for me sometimes because they're – there is a big part of me that understands that a lot of women have been preyed on by number one, the conventional medical system and number two, the abortion industry, which are pretty much hand in hand now. And I've spoken to a lot of women over the last few years who have come around on abortion. They've either had an abortion themselves or they know friends who have, or they used to just be pro abortion. And they realize that a lot of the things they were taught about abortion and pregnancy and birth and, their hormones, it was totally wrong or they just weren't taught anything at all. And it makes me sad because the abortion industry is predatory. The conventional medical system in many ways can be predatory. And so you have this whole generation, a couple of generations now of women who just don't know any real information about their own bodies and about fertility and pregnancy. So a part of me does feel bad for a lot of the women who have fallen prey to this kind of predatory behavior. But then there's the another part of me that sees women like Carla Foster. She knew exactly what she was doing. And there are a lot of women, especially on the far left, who know exactly what they're doing. And they post videos celebrating abortion. They wear the t-shirts, abortion is beautiful, abortion is healthcare. And it's those types of women that make me sick to my stomach. And it makes me really fear for the future because it is pure, downright evil. And I had some of them in my mentions today at Twitter. You know, I was talking about how insane it is that Carla Foster is somehow being made out to be a victim. And I had all these raging feminists. F you, you stupid bitch. Oh, F you. You know, all they know is rage. All they know is, is, is rage and anger and hatred and evil. That's it. We are living in very dark times, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this is demonic stuff. It is demonic to convince women that killing your own child is somehow going to make your life better, that killing your own child is somehow empowering, and that it's somehow considered health care. That's what gets me, is that so many women have been convinced that killing your own baby in the womb is somehow a form of health care. Man, that is a sick world we live in. Whatever happened to do no harm? Doctors are supposed to take that oath, do no harm. So, you know, I know that our priest would tell us to pray for Carla Foster. I know that he would. And I will, even though it's going to be very hard. Because, I, you know, there is always hope for people. And I do hope that she comes out of prison and maybe she becomes a wonderful anti-abortion advocate. You never know with people. There are women like Abby Johnson. She used to be a manager at a Planned Parenthood clinic and she had an abortion herself and now she is one of the loudest anti-abortion voices that we have online. So you can always rewrite your own story and like I said before, Christ always offers redemption and forgiveness but you see stories like this and it just makes you so angry. But all we can really do is pray for women like Carla Foster and pray that they do become our strongest anti-abortion advocates because she said, or the, the judge said in court that this woman had been suffering from nightmares, night terrors, visions of seeing her child. Who knows, maybe she'll turn around and come out of prison and just tell women that it's the wrong thing to do. I hope she does. Because let me tell you guys, there is, there's never 
and never a good reason for abortion. And no, really quick, there's never a medical reason, ne- never a medical reason for abortion. A lot of doctors have talked about this and debunked the idea that, well, sometimes you need an abortion to save a woman's life. No, there's no such thing as needing to go into a woman's body and kill the child to save the woman's life. You may have to induce and have an early delivery. And unfortunately, sometimes that ends in the child passing away. But that is not at all the same thing as going in and ripping the limbs out and intentionally killing the child. So don't ever believe the lie that abortion is medically necessary. Oh, Gina, you're not a doctor. No, I'm not a doctor, but I don't need to be a doctor to know that. And neither do you. Stop giving doctors so much of a God complex. Like you, we, we are allowed to know things like you can read, you can do your own research. Go ahead, go interview doctors, go, go interview some OBGYNs. You don't have to kill a child to save a woman's life. Like I said, sadly, there are some cases where they have to give birth to the baby or do something that sadly results in a child not surviving, but not the same thing. Miscarriage and abortion are not the same thing. Still birth and abortion are not the same thing. I think that's it for today. If you are someone who wants to learn more about your fertility, ladies, click the link in the description. Join the shift on Mighty Networks. You don't need Facebook or any other um, account like that to sign in. It's just hosted on Mighty Networks. You can download the app too. We got a lot of really great experts talking about fertility, hormones, etc. So join us and see you guys next time. 